check this out. During the initial space flights into space, okay, apparently the Russian cosmonauts discovered that ink pens didn't work well under zero gravity conditions. Okay? In fact, they didn't work at all. Okay? And so to beat the problem, the Russians used their ingenuity and spent over $2 million over six full years to design a pen that worked in, in space. And when they were done, Ron, the pen would actually work well, awesome, under zero gravity conditions due to the pressurized ink that they had built in this mechanism, you know, in the, in the, inside the, the pen there. In fact, it worked well under sub-zero conditions, underwater, on glass, and virtually any surface known to mankind. And the Americans? <laughs> we just used a pencil. <laughs> American ingenuity, that's right. But that's right. Anyway, but uh, as you guys can see by that story, obviously some nations, they have different ways of getting the job done, don't they? Right? Some better than others, obviously. And uh, believe it or not, the Bible says that one day all the nations around the planet are going to combine their ingenuity into a so-called great project, even more fabulous, they say, than a space pen. Okay? Now, the irony is, though, they think this project that they're combining their ingenuity around is going to be the greatest breakthrough in mankind's history, but the Bible says it's going to be your worst nightmare. And this project that they're going to get duped into working together, applying their ingenuity to, is called the Antichrist Kingdom. And you don't want to have any part of building that. Okay, as we've been seeing, okay? And, and that's all going to happen at the rapture of the church. And the reason why, folks, is going to be such a nightmarish time for humanity is because for those who refuse to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, they're going to be catapulted into the seven-year tribulation, the Antichrist kingdom. And that's not a joke. As we've been seeing, Jesus warned about that time. It's a time of greater horror this planet has ever seen or will ever see again, he said. And that unless God shortened that time frame, not anybody, the human race, would completely be destroyed. But praise God, we've been seeing that God's not just a God of wrath, which again, is not a bad thing. He's going to put an end to all this injustice and evil and fear and manipulation that's going on right now. That's good. But he's also got to love as well. And because he loves you and I, folks, he's given us so many warning signs to let us know when that time is near, this seven-year tribulation, the Antichrist kingdom, which means, praise God, Jesus Christ is coming back. Anybody excited about that? Okay, that's the twofold thing. Okay, therefore, in order to keep you and I here at sunrise from experiencing the ultimate bad day, hello, being left behind to be thrust into the Antichrist kingdom, okay, uh, we're going to continue our study. That's right, the final countdown. We've already seen the final countdown. How many guys, after all this time, you finally discovered that, hey, now I get it why he's going from 10 down. It's a countdown. Okay, <laughs> okay there's a couple of you still waiting. But anyway, that's right. We got more time. Uh, number 10 on the final countdown was the Jewish people. Number nine, modern technology. Number eight, worldwide upheaval. Uh, number seven, the rise of falsehood. Number six, the rise of wickedness. Number five, the rise of apostasy. Number four, the rise of a one world religion. And last time we saw the third sign, a new sign. We're cruising now. That's right, the rise of a one world government. The Bible is clear about it. And the Bible says, guys, when you start to see all the religions or the, the governments around the planet coming together as one, which is happening right now today, you better watch out. You're in that generation uh, that you're living in the last days. And we saw that with the chronological proof, folks. They are slowly, methodically, over the decades, working towards this. We saw that with the current administration proof. If you're going to follow the Antichrist system, that means you're going to have to turn away from God. Antichrist, right? And that's what's happening uh, even right now. And then even the quotational proof. <laughs> There's no conspiracy here. These people admit it. They are working towards a global one world government, a new world order. They say it. We're not making it up, okay? But that's not all. The fourth proof we know we're headed for a one world government is what I call the tactical proof. This is how they pull it off, the tactics, okay? And I'm telling you, man, the enemy is slick, okay? And what most people don't realize, folks, it's not just that we're seeing these people uh, working together to form this one world government. But listen, here's what people don't get. The very tactics they're using to put this one world government together behind the scenes is the exact same tactics the Bible said the Antichrist would use, predicting it nearly 2,000 years ago. Exact same thing. But don't take my word for it. Let's listen to God. So open your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians 2. It's going to be our opening text. 2 Thessalonians 2. If you find that book, what do you say? Praise God, that one's a rough one to find. And I just keep flipping, you'll get there. Uh, 2 Thessalonians Okay, uh, chapter 2, we're going to read verses 1 through 12, and uh, when you get there, as we're going to see, is it's a, it's a, the whole passage is dealing clearly uh, with the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, okay, is going to be the context there. Second Thessalonians 2, when you get there, say moo. Moo, hey, you're getting there, that's right. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Let's take a look at a big uh, uh, passage dealing with the Antichrist, and let's see what tactics he used to dupe people to go along with his kingdom. Let's take a look. 
uh, chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians, verse 1 says this. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody excited? Yeah, and are being gathered to him. Praise God. He said, we ask your brothers, first of all, not to become uneasily uh, uh, unsettled or, or alarmed by some prophecy or report or some letter supposed to have come from us, saying that the day of the Lord has already come. He said, come on. He says, don't let anybody uh, uh, deceive you in any way. For that day is not going to come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist, is revealed. The man doomed to destruction. Now, he's going to oppose and he will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worship so that he sets himself up in God's temple proclaiming himself to be God. He says, don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things and now you know what's holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is what? It's already at work, folks. But the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he's taken out of the way. And then the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed. Whom, pray, listen to this, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming, Revelation 19. Now, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of who? Satan, like father, like son. He's going to be just like Satan. Okay, displayed in all kinds of counterfeit, fake, miracles, signs and wonders, and in every sort of evil that what? Deceives those who are perishing. Now, they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the what? The lie. And so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. Now, folks, according to our text, I think it's pretty clear. The Bible says, whatever you do, man, don't reject God's truth, right? In fact, whether you like it, lump it, leave it or not, he says, you might want to deal with the facts, even if they're kind of ugly, right? Why? Because he says, if you don't, then you're going to be one of those people in the last days who are going to be duped by the Antichrist. You're going to be one of those people who are perishing, falling for his lies. Now, here's the point. Notice the tactics he's going to use to pull this off. How does he get the job done? How does he get the world to go along with his program, his Antichrist kingdom, and a one world government? Well, what he says there repeatedly is he uses deceit, right? Okay, that, that's his lying, satanic, counterfeit tactic. It's lies, okay? And that shouldn't be a surprise to us because the text clearly says he gets his authority, we've seen before and here, is this from Satan, right? He is satanically inspired. So that means the Antichrist, whatever Satan is about, then the Antichrist is about, right? And what's Satan do? He's a liar, Lies, deceit, lies, deceit. He's the father of all lies. And so it's not any surprise that the Antichrist uses the same evil tactics to get people to go along with his uh, one world government. Okay, it makes perfect sense. But here's the point. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad we see no signs of people on the planet today using lies and deceit, lies and deceit to snooker us into going along with the one world government. Aren't you guys excited about that? Aren't you encouraged today? Hey, folks, this is in high gear big time. And the first evil tactic, listen, that they're using on you and I to get us to go along with this one world government is fear and manipulation. Now, as you can tell by that picture, this is, if ever there was a time to stop eating chicken, it's now for this guy. That's just like, ah, right? Stop it, knock it out. But that's a detour. The point is fear and manipulation. Okay, so you can, and this is what they do to us, okay? Now, now, put your thinking caps on this morning. Put yourself, if you will, in the Antichrist shoes. This makes total sense. Okay? If you're going to deceive the whole planet into creating a one world government, then you first have to get the whole planet into a constant state of absolute, utter, ongoing fear, right? Why? Because that's when you can manipulate them, right? He's not dumb. He knows historically, listen, here's the crux of the tactic. He knows historically that people are more apt to surrender their freedoms in a time of fear than in a time of peace. I'll repeat that again. He knows, he's not dumb, he knows that people, even us here in America, are more apt to surrender our freedoms in a time of fear than in a time of peace. So, if you create a crisis, you can manage the outcome. If you create a fearful event, you can manipulate people into doing whatever you want them to do. In fact, you'll do it so slick, you'll get them to cry out for your agenda. And they won't even realize it. And folks, if you've been paying attention or not, this is precisely what's been happening to our country here in America for the last several years. For instance, in order to drum up fear, to manipulate you and I, to go along with a one world government, we are told that we have a health care crisis. Not a problem. It's a health care crisis. 
We have a child care crisis. We have an economy crisis. We have a constitutional crisis. We've got a terrorist crisis. And who could forget that dreaded environmental crisis? We don't have problems anymore, Al. Everything's a horrible crisis waiting to explode. Oh. <laughs> See, it's that guy's picture again, wasn't it? That's what they're doing to us. And because, listen, because of these crises that are seemingly out of control all over the world and it never stops, turn on your news. Oh. It's worked us up into a state of constant fear that never stops. You never get a rest from it. Okay? And they're using that to manipulate us to cry out for what they want us to cry out for. Listen, all of a sudden, just what? The economy, this, and the terrorists, and the environment, and the healthcare, and uh, we just need some global entity. We need a global savior. We need a global government to fix all these global problems out of control, right? We've been manipulated. And you might think, hey, come on, is this really weird work on people, this satanic, antichrist, deceitful, lying tactic, fear and manipulation? Does it really work into getting people to surrender their freedoms? Yeah. And the first thing is already working very well for them, folks, to manipulate us, this tactic, is it's leading to a universal congress. A universal Congress. Again, put yourself in the Antichrist shoes. Okay, if you're going to uh, manipulate the whole world into creating this one world government, then you first have to have some sort of a global Congress or governing body to oversee the whole thing, right? Well, folks, what in the world do you think the United Nations and many countries around the world have been working on for decades? Pay attention, folks. Right now, not 50 years in the future, Right now, there is waiting for approval or is already in place the plans for absolute, total, global control of the whole world. Right now, as you sit here, there is already a universal law that they want the whole planet to obey. It's called the Earth Charter. And this is the new universal law that they want to unite all peoples on the planet to come together. Why? Because here's the crisis. The planet's going to blow up. Global warming. Ah! So we need to come together under this new law for everybody to follow, to unify the planet, called the Earth Charter. And for those of you who don't know what it's about, let's take a look at that. And shocker, look at some of the people who are behind this thing. Let's take a look. The Earth Charter, folks, is defined as a, quote, declaration of fundamental principles for building a just, sustainable, now if you've been here with the study for a while, remember sustainable, that's the code word for, like it, lump it, leave it or not, population control. Because remember, that's their agenda. This is why these people are, are, are selling out their souls to Satan and even the sovereignty of our own nation is because they believe they're going to be the ones on top. They're going to annihilate their own goals. 90% of the planet, and they're on top, and the rest of us that they decide who get to live get to serve them. Isn't that awesome? That's what they mean by sustainable or sustainable development, as creepy as that is. Okay, now, and, it's all, and of course, a peaceful global society for the 21st century. It was created by a global commission of leaders from all over the world, and guess who's there again? Mikhail Gorbachev, okay, and Stephen Rockefeller. And listen, it's not just two guys. It's not a couple of crazies in some smoke-filled room back in uh, Bulgaria. 100,000 different people in 51 different countries have jumped on this baby. It's called the Earth Charter, okay? They say it's a new constitution for all of us to follow in order to save the planet. It's going to blow, right? Now. Yeah, okay? That's the manipulation. Otherwise, we risk destruction of the planet and ourselves. But the real agenda of the Earth Charter is to eliminate national sovereignty to place all of us, to place all of us under the global control of a, and this is their own words, a Earth government. In fact, uh, Gorbachev said this, my hope is that this charter will be a kind of Ten Commandments. A Sermon on the Mount that provides a guide for human behavior, the whole planet, towards the environment in the next century. And then UN guy Maurice Strong said, the real goal of the Earth Charter is that it will become, in fact, like the Ten Commandments. It's a new Ten Commandments for all of us to follow. Okay, now listen to this. Speaking of the Ten Commandments, these are actual pictures of it. The Earth Charter has its own ark. That's it right there. It's called the Ark of Hope. Complete mockery of the biblical thing. I'm telling you folks, this is a spiritual battle. It's not just a geopolitical thing, okay? Just like the Bible talks about. It's carried around by these people, here you can see some of them, called ark walkers, okay? They take it to the UN. The UN, you ain't gonna understand nothing until you understand spiritually what's going on there. It's one of the most new agey places on the planet. Uh, ark walkers, and the four sides of the ark has artwork depicting the four directions, north, east, south, west, the four elements, earth, water, fire, and air, you know, the occult, and on top is the fifth element, spirit. And the edges around the top have a variety of religious symbols and occult symbols, including a pentagram. Hmm, I wonder who inspired it. 
okay, is the thought for the day. In fact, here's the inauguration video. I'm not making this up. This has really happened. While we're all busy with other things, hope that economy turns around. This is what's going on behind the scenes, pushing us towards a universal law called the Earth Charter. Let's take a look. Fundamental changes are needed in our values, institutions, and ways of living. The Earth Charter provides an ethical foundation for building a more sustainable world respecting nature, universal human rights, economic justice, and a culture of peace. The creation of the Earth Charter was achieved through a decade-long, worldwide, cross-cultural dialogue on commonly shared values. Beginning with the 1992 Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, the Earth Charter drafting process continued gaining momentum at the 1995 Earth Charter International Workshop in The Hague, Netherlands. This unique, participatory and inclusive process continued over the next five years through national and regional workshops worldwide. A new phase began in the year 2000 with the official launching of the Earth Charter. We make this gift of service to all our brothers and sisters in the human family, especially to the children, to those who suffer in poverty and under oppression, and to future generations. It is vital for humans and nature that the Earth Charter movement continues to spread its message of hope for the brighter future. We could all just come together on this new Ten Commandments, the Earth Charter, and hey, give it up for the environmental movement, by the way. Isn't that awesome? You know, so how we can save the planet and we can build this brighter future and we can save everyone. Or is it the ultimate excuse to snookers and to cry out for, hey, global government? Fear, manipulation. It's the exact same tactics the Bible says the Antichrist is going to use. But that's not all. If you're going to have a universal law of the land, well, that's already in place. Just think about it logically, what you have to have in place if you're going to pull off a one world government. If you're going to have a universal law of the land, then you need to have this universal governing body to oversee that law, right? What good is it unless you can enforce it? Well, that's why right now there's a document called the Constitution for the Federation Earth, listen, with plans for a world government, a world Supreme Court, world capitals, and a world police. And the only thing holding that up is ratification, which they're hoping is going to take place uh, real soon. But wait a second. If you're going to have a universal governing body, then you've got to have a universal judicial system to make sure that people obey this world government, right? Well, folks, that's why right now there is in place a world criminal court that went into effect July 2002, thanks in part to the signing of the treaty by Bill Clinton, his last day in office. Yeah, thanks, pal. It's called the International Criminal Court. And now anybody anywhere on the planet can be taken to court if you don't obey. Let's take a look at that. This is pretty wild. Some of the worst crimes ever known have been committed during the 20th century. Millions of children, women and men have been victims of unimaginable atrocities that have deeply shocked the conscience of humanity. Unfortunately, in the past, such crimes have often gone unpunished. Millions of people died during two world wars and in fighting in Rwanda, Sierra Leone and the former Yugoslavia. The International Criminal Court is the first permanent court with jurisdiction over the most serious crimes threatening the peace, security and well-being of the world. In 1998, during the Rome Diplomatic Conference on the International Criminal Court, 160 countries negotiated a treaty to design the world's first permanent International Criminal Court. Yeah, yeah, isn't that awesome? For the first time in man's history, we now have a court system universal on the planet to make us go along with this one world government. Isn't that cool? Bah humbug. Uh, hey, you said bah humbug. Uh, hey, give it up for Mary. That's right. Uh, the prophet Mary has spoken. We need a camera going this way, too. Get that on the video. But, uh, but what? Are you serious? We're still not done, folks. Put it all together. What the Antichrist has to have in place. You tell me for not getting close in order to pull off a one world government. If you're gonna have a universal judicial system, which you got now, okay, in order to enforce this universal law, you got to have some sort of a universal army to punish those people who would be those dreaded resistors who won't go along with this program, right? Well, folks, if you've been paying attention right now, and he's been doing it for many years, Tony Blair, 
the former prime minister of England, has been calling for NATO to become, quote, the future military arm of a new world order rather than just a strictly defensive alliance. And if you start to look, you see that they're starting to take more uh, exercise and military force over the sovereignty of nations, aren't they? I wonder who's next. But here's the point. It sounds to me like you put all this together. Somebody already has the key things in place in order to pull off a one world government. And they're using fear and manipulation ooh, to get us to go along with it, aren't they? But that's only part of it. The second thing this fear and manipulation tactic is working towards is leading towards a universal behavior. Now again, remember these guys' goal. If you get to be one of the ones who get to live, they are going to dictate everything we get to do. Okay? Put yourself again in the Antichrist shoes. If you're going to deceive this whole world into creating a one world government, you have to provide a universal standard of behavior to dictate universal compliance, right? Well, again, this is what the United Nations has been working on for decades, and they're using fear and manipulation to pull it off. I'm telling you, there's a multitude of things that are getting mileage out of the environmental movement. For instance, right now, in order to preserve our supposed endangered earth, let's all try that. Ooh, ooh, right? In order to save the endangered earth, they now have something called the World Heritage Protection Program. Okay? And the UN, right now, you can check it out for yourself, right now has full authority over millions of acres right here in America. Such landmarks as Yellowstone National Park, the Statue of Liberty, the Grand Canyon, and Yosemite Valley, uh, Valley, just to name a few. And then in order to preserve our supposed endangered food supply. Ooh, you got to get into it eventually. Ooh, you guys sound like you're sick and we had some salmonella at the potluck or something. Ooh, we're not there yet. That's coming later. Okay, but anyway, it's our endangered food supply. Ooh, okay, they have the... Uh, thank you. <laughs> They're meeting and continue to meet with the World Food Summit, right? Okay, and they are continuing to meet to govern, listen, what crops we can grow, what livestock we can raise, and what food we get to eat. Isn't that exciting? But that's not all. In order to preserve our supposed endangered air, land, and water supply. Ooh. Now this one's creepy. They've got a program out there, and they've been pushing this for quite some time. It's called Agenda 21. And Agenda 21, plans for the 21st century, they plan to dictate every single thing we do. I mean everything. And things such as what job we can get, what housing we can have, what education, what health care we can get, what means of transport. I mean everything. They're going to dictate what we can do. Let's take a look at that. If I were to tell you folks in the very near future that the United States would have, listen, no private property, no air conditioning, no dams, no paved roads, no way to correct rivers for flood control, no golf courses. I got your attention now, don't I? I'm getting active now, Pastor Billy. The, yeah, I had to get to the golf course before. But anyway, uh, no pasture land used for grazing. Would you believe it? Well, folks, this is what's going on behind the scenes is we're all distracted with other things. Okay? Uh, believe it or not, these are all mandates of the United Nations program right now called Agenda 21. In fact, pretty soon, just like China, they're even going to control how many kids we have right here in America. Sustainable development. Let's take a look at that. We have only one Earth, our living planet, that helps sustain life. We are warned this life system is in crisis. Fresh water, clean air, good soil, the things we need to stay alive are being destroyed. Sustaining the environment is something we all have a vested interest in. After all, who wants to pollute the water or the land? Let's look at the Chinese Communist government and its one-child policy. Just like marriage in China, there are numerous hurdles to overcome before permission is granted. For a Chinese couple to have a child, they have to get a birth license. In order for the couple to get a license, they have to go through a procedure that runs through local Communist Party functionaries. Without a birth license, no hospital or doctor can treat the mother or the child before, during, or after the birth. The Chinese are required to inform the authorities of any illegal birth. 
In short, the Chinese government is in complete control. Since China is one of the five permanent members of the UN Security Council, it has a great deal of influence on UN policy and how they view population control. China's one-child policy is now being considered as a viable solution towards sustainable development. The PCSD shows their support of this very idea in their 1998 publication, Sustainable America. We must move towards stabilization of the U.S. population and a reduced rate of population growth in the United States and the world. But that's not all. Here's some even more so-called unsustainable targets that we will no longer have because they're not good for the environment, okay, uh, if Agenda 21 goes through. Believe it or not, ski runs because you have to cut down trees and disturb the soil in order to have those ski runs, and that's, that's not good. You need to leave everything pristine. Don't touch anything. Uh, grazing livestock. They dip the grass. You got the methane gas thing going on. That's not good for the environment. You can't have that. Uh, disturbing the soil surface, plowing the soil. Th that ruins the ground. You've got to leave it alone, okay? Uh, uh, building fences. That's not cool. That's not natural. That's not pristine. You, you can't build a fence anymore. Commercial agriculture, modern farm production, can't do that. That's not natural. Uh, chemical fertilizers, got to get rid of those. Uh, the use of fossil fuels. Good thing we see no signs of us being ushered and pushed towards everything going to electric. Maybe there's an agenda behind all this stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, any industrial activity, well, that could pollute the air. Single family homes, their we'll get to the map in a second. Their desire is that you and I, that's too much space. That's wasted space. Okay, so we now all to be, need to be corralled in these giant high-rise apartment complexes. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, ooh, ooh, I like your noise now. Okay, continue on. Paved and tarred roads. They say get rid of those things. That's not natural. Railroads, uh, floor and wall tiles, uh, technology, uh, rangelands, fish ponds, plantations, uh, harvesting timber. Got to save the trees, remember? Uh, hunting. Can't do that because that's not nice to the animals, is it now? Uh, logging activities, uh, dams, reservoirs, straightening of rivers, power line construction. That's not natural, okay? You're supposed to just look at trees. In fact, they will not only control your birth, as we saw in the video. Listen, they're actually going to go to the other end of the spectrum, and they're going to control your death. Here is two Agenda 21 commercials that aired, actually, I believe, on CNN. You tell me if they're not going to control the population. Listen to this. This is sick. Every year, millions of imperfect babies are born, destined for a life of struggle and hardship. But it is the rest of us who pay the ultimate cost. Billions of dollars that could be used to better society are instead wasted on the malformed. There must be a better way. And there is. Agenda 21 is coming soon. The Earth just cannot handle the sheer number of humans who live here. Something has to give. And I believe that it's up to us who have lived a good life to make sure that our children will have the opportunity to live good lives too. I have lived a good life. 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 You've lived a good life. According to Agenda 21, don't you realize it's your patriotic duty to let somebody else pull the plug for you? If you're old or if you've got a deformity, you need to do what's right and make room for the rest of us. Is this sick or what? That's why I wanted you to see the actual commercials. I'm not making this up, folks. This is the Antichrist kingdom. He's just like Satan. He's not just a liar. Satan is a murderer. He's been one from the beginning. The Antichrist is going to do the same thing. Like father, like son with Satan, okay? But that's not all. That's right. In order to preserve our supposed endangered animals. Ooh, that's right. Because they're more important than humans nowadays, right? Right now, they have something. They've come real close to getting this baby passed, okay? Uh, it's called the Biodiversity Treaty, okay? And that thing is getting ready to dictate, even here in America, believe it or not, part of their plan is they want to turn the United States into a massive animal uh, re reserve park, okay? And they're going to dictate where you and I get to live, okay? Let's take a look at this. this is the actual map. You can check this out. I'm not making it up. It's the uh, Simulated Reserve Corridor System to Protect Biodiversity. Boy, doesn't that sound great? No, it's horrible. Okay, it's the Wildlands Project, uh, the Biosphere Map is another term, they got several terms for it, but this is the actual map. The legend's down there, you can get the video and study it yourself later, or go online, it's all up there. Uh, th let me explain the map to you. Okay, most of it's red, right? Well, the red areas is what they're proposing is where the animals get to live. 
Now, then you say, well, the second biggest area is the yellow zones. Well, that's for us. No, it's not. Those are what they call buffer zones to make sure that you and I don't disturb the animals. Where you and I, they're proposing to get us to live is just the blue areas. And notice that most of us just shoved over there on the East Coast. And by the way, again, that's not with you having your own property anymore. We're all going to be shacked together in these apartment complexes because that's not friendly to the environment. Yep. It's going to, it's going to get uh, pretty bad, folks, is what they're wanting. Now, here's what the thing is with that map. It's not just how ma- uh, wild that map is uh, in the first place. Isn't that kind of crazy? Now, here's what's wild, folks, if you understand Bible prophecy. That map, you put it all together, if they pull it off, then maybe that starts to explain this passage of scripture. This is cool. I don't know if you ever wondered about this, but I have. Revelation chapter six, verse eight. This is one of the sealed judgments during the first half of the seven year tribulation. Says this, I looked and there before me was a pale horse. Okay, its rider was named Death and Hades was following close behind him. How many guys would say that's one horse you don't want to ride? Okay, right, okay. But listen, here's what happened. They were given a power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague. And by the what? wild beasts of the earth okay that's about current population that would be about two billion people in one shot okay but the bible says folks during the antichrist kingdom the first half of the seven-year tribulation what we see is that one-fourth of the planet is going to be annihilated and it calls out specifically the four things that's going to produce that annihilation it said sword it said famine it said plague and wild beasts. now i don't know about you but i can see the sword thing armies wars right I can, I can see famine. That takes out a lot of people. And plague. We've dealt with that before. But, but wild beast? I mean, who's concerned about wild beasts nowadays? I mean, they're all locked up in zoos in these nature preserves. That's, that's not a threat anymore, is it, Al? Let's go back to that map. If these people get their way and they turn, not just America, but the world, back into some giant nature preserve in order to save the planet, Do you realize for the first time in mankind's history, we might see an absolute massive resurgence of wild animals even here in America? And once that famine hits during the seven-year tribulation, they're going to be hungry. And I wonder who they're going to eat. And the Bible said 2,000 years ago, sword, famine, plague, and wild beasts are going to take out the planet. Isn't that wild? Even minute passages like this are coming to life in our lifetime like never before. One more to go. The third thing this fear manipulation tactic of the Antichrist is leading to is a universal border. A universal border. Let's take a look at that text. That's Revelation 17, verses 9, 12 through 13. It says this, now understand this. Speaking of the Antichrist, his 10 horns are what? 10 kings who have not yet risen to power. They will be appointed to their kingdoms for one brief moment to reign with the Antichrist. And then... Apparently, all of a sudden, they will all agree to give their power and authority over to him. And he'll have absolute total control of the world. But the Bible says here in this passage, folks, that the Antichrist kingdom is going to be split up initially into ten parts, right? The planet's going to be split up into ten parts. Listen, it's going to be ruled by ten kings or rulers, right? Who at one point surrender their power, their authority over to the Antichrist. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad we see zero trends of people chunking up the planet into 10 different sections in order for, yes, it is. Now, here's what's wild. It isn't just that they're, they're uh, projecting that we need to split the planet up into sections, kingdoms. But I'm telling you, folks, of all numbers that they're saying we need to do it, it's 10. Not five is their proposal. Not 19, not 122, but exactly 10. The first ones who started to do this was called the Club of Rome. This was at, back in the mid, early 70s. Okay, and they proposed even back then to split the planet up to have better economic control, you know, so we don't ever go through this economic crisis again, right? Now, for those of you hooked on math and numbers and who are actually awake, uh, you can see that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, ten. Interesting. That was back in the 70s. They began to propose to split our planet up in this 10 section but that's not all this and i i did screenshots on these you could go there today and check out yourself okay so you can see i'm not making this is not wacky conspiracy guy.org as we saw last week but as you can see this is the european communion or, or commission's uh, site and this is the european union's version of the world okay there's the actual web address everything's up there you can check it out and you can see they've got the planet shaded into different areas now if you scroll down i'll scroll down for you uh, you'll see that they have the planet into these different sections. And once again, for those of you hooked on math, if you want to count real quick, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, oh, ten. The European Communion is looking at the planet being split up into ten unions. 
Interesting. Oh, but it gets even worse than that. This one is from the United Nations Parliamentary Assembly. This is their website. I just checked again this week. It's still active. It's still there. This is from uh, March 2009, and they made a declaration on their website. Listen to this. Revelation 17 coming alive. A new research program on global democracy. One world government has been established. Now listen. It says a global research program facilitated and coordinated through a convening group of what? Ten persons based in 10 world regions, was established last year with core funding from the Ford Foundation. And 2,000 years ago, the Bible says that's what you're going to see with the Antichrist kingdom. Isn't that wild? In fact, if I didn't know better, I'd say that the Antichrist is probably going to use the exact same Mark of the Beast technology that we saw last week, you know, the biochip implant thing, uh, to not only control what people buy and sell, but you know what? I bet you he's going to use that same technology to uh, uh, control people's movements between these 10 different kingdoms. How about you? And if you don't think that's getting close, then folks, you might want to pay attention to this whole uh, immigration issue. Mexico's already doing some certain things to help control their border. Watch this. This is wild. Mexico is highly critical of U.S. immigration policy, but it's taking extraordinary measures when it comes to its own immigration crisis. Mexico is taking drastic measures to control illegal immigration across its southern border. Now, Mexico will reportedly use an electronic chip to curb illegal immigration from Guatemala and Belize. The biochip implant will replace the so-called local pass currently being used to enter the country. In 2006, Mexico arrested 200,000 people trying to enter their country illegally. I mean, you know, those cards, you know, you could lose them. But if you put it on the inside of you, it's a little bit more convenient. Wow, that's interesting. Hey, maybe there's something more to this, not just immigration problem, but immigration crisis. Oh. Thank you, all four of you. Maybe they're going to use that whole thing as a crisis to get us to go along with implant. I don't know. But hey, they wouldn't do that. I mean, our government would never force us to get an implant to track our every move, would they? Well, folks, you saw this in the Bible study. Uh, man, I tell you what, on, uh, did the Bible really come from God? I'm going to share it again now in this context. We should have been paying attention then, folks, if you don't think so. That they're not going to force us into getting some sort of an implant to track our every move. Because uh, back then, uh, Biden, okay, was grilling uh, John Roberts for the chief justice of the Supreme Court decision, uh, uh, position. Okay, here's what he said during that congressional hearing. This is wild. And we'll be faced with equally consequential decisions in the 21st century. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement. There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that, mark my words, before your tenure is over. Can brain scans be used to determine whether a person is inclined toward criminality or violent behavior? You will rule on that. I think the real concern that most people have is that, you know, at some point the government would say, line up and get your chip. What was his prediction? You will rule on that. So he not only made it into the position there, and of course Biden is now the vice president, but uh, surely he would never force us, he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't say yeah to that. I mean, well, first of all, Shirley's right there, stop calling me Shirley. Uh, the second thing is, uh, didn't we all think that for sure that this whole health care thing that we would be forced into going along with, it would never make it past the Supreme Court? Who had the big swing vote? Gee whiz, I don't know, guys. It seems to me that uh, the Antichrist one world government is being formed before our very eyes and the tactic he's using is fear and manipulation. And that's exactly what the Bible says is going to happen when you're living in the last days. Folks, as we close, as always, the point is this. What more does God got to do? How much more evidence does he have to give us? This is not a game. This is real. Okay? It's all being formed before our very eyes. God doesn't want us to go into the Antichrist kingdom. He certainly doesn't want us to end up in hell. And so out of love, he gives us these signs in advance. They just happen to be happening uh, to be going on in our lifetime. But he gives them out of love for us so that we can be prepared. He doesn't want us to go there and we don't have to. Take the way out through Jesus Christ. This is what Jesus said, Luke 21, 28, when these things begin to take place and they are taking place. Church, stand up. Woo! That means Jesus Christ is coming back to get us. Okay? Is what he's saying there. Okay? And the place that Jesus is building is a whole lot better and you want to be a part of that kingdom.
Okay, and again, the point as we close, folks, is this. Hey, man, if you're here today and uh, you're a Christian, hey, come on, what more do we have to do? This is time to get active. This is not a time to beat each other up. This is a time to come together, get united, start working on things that matter for all eternity, like saving souls by the Spirit of God, amen? Okay, number two, if you're not a Christian, I'm telling you what you just saw is the chip of the ice, the tip of the iceberg. He is going to the Antichrist, Revelation 13. If you are still behind, if you are left behind and are thrust into the seven year tribulation, he will force you into taking that chip or you will die. What we just saw is the tip of the iceberg. He's just like his father, so to speak, Satan, and he is going to lie and deceive to get you to go along. But if you don't go along, he will take you out. You don't want to be there. But here's the good news. Take the way out today through Jesus Christ, like the people who got baptized and be rescued from the wrath to come. Amen? Let's pray. Well, hi, this is Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church, and I hope you enjoyed today's study. But before you go, let me ask you one final question. Are you sure that if you were to die today, that you go to heaven and not hell? Before you answer that, let me share a couple things with you. Did you know that the Bible says that God is holy and that we are not? And the Bible also says that the wages of our sin or our unholiness is death. In other words, when we die, and it's coming for each one of us, we're all marching towards the grave at different speeds, but it's going to happen. The Bible says, therefore, since the wages of our sin is death, we deserve to die and go straight to hell and not to heaven. And that's bad enough, but to make matters worse, we don't want to admit this. God already knows he knows uh, all of our behavior, everything, our thoughts, what we've done, what even we're going to do. He knows it all. He's gone. Even though he already knows this, we don't want to admit this. And so out of love and mercy, God gave us something called his law or the Ten Commandments. It's kind of like his x-ray into our heart to show us what he already knows, that he is holy and that we are not. And it's this unholiness or sin that separates us from him. Let's take a look at God's x-ray, if you will, his divine law, to show us what he already knows. The Ten Commandments, uh, the ninth one, says this, you shall not bear false witness. Okay, that's called lying. Okay, and if you've ever told a lie once, which we all have, myself included, the Bible says that makes you a liar. Okay, the, the, another commandment says you shall not steal. Okay, uh, and you might think, well, that's something that everybody does. Well, it doesn't make it right, and it demonstrates what God is trying to show us, that uh, we all have sin, and it's separating us from him. Even if you took a pencil in the third grade from somebody, if you did it without permission, that's stealing. And so now you've become a thief. The Bible says that you shall not use the Lord's name in vain. And how interesting it is and unfortunate that the only name under heaven by which men might be saved, the name Jesus Christ, has now become a common cuss word. The Bible says that God is so holy that even his name is holy. If you've taken the Lord's name in vain and used it as a cuss word or even flippantly, the Bible calls that the sin of blasphemy. And so now you become a blasphemer. The Bible says you shall not commit adultery. And Jesus says if you even look at another person with lust in your eye, you've committed adultery in your heart. And finally, the Bible says uh, you shall not murder and you might think, well, hey, I haven't done that one. Really? Well, again, the Bible says that the sin of hatred is the same as the sin of murder. The only difference is you pulled the trigger, if you will, in your heart. You wish they were dead. And in God's eyes, it's the same thing in principle. Folks, that's only just a couple of the Ten Commandments. We didn't even go through all of them. But I think you're starting to get the picture. The Bible is correct. We have all fallen short of the glory of God, myself included, and that we are separated from God as a result. And so when our time comes, we're not automatically going to heaven. We are headed for judgment. We are headed for hell. Now let me tell you the good news. The good news is that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to save us. Jesus Christ died on the cross. It was the death penalty of its day. He paid in full uh, the price for our sins to be forgiven. Let me give you an analogy. E for instance, even today, we could see that a person could commit a crime. Uh, they, they cannot reverse it. The, the sentence has been passed. The judge has uh, slammed his gavel, and they are ushered off into their jail cell. 
And in this particular crime, they are going to receive the death penalty. And so they're behind bars just waiting for the time, waiting for the call for them to go and uh, receive the death penalty. But believe it or not, as we know, there is a way that a person can get off a of death row. And that is if the one in authority, the governor, would grant them a pardon. Now, they didn't earn it. Uh, they certainly don't deserve it. And there's nothing they could do uh, to earn it because nothing can reverse their crime. Okay? Yet the one in authority has that ability to grant them a pardon. Well, can I tell you something? That's what God has done through Jesus Christ. The cross was the death penalty of the day. God sent his one and only son to die on the cross, to take the death penalty in our place, and that if we would just receive his pardon for all of our sins, God is willing to allow us to get off a of death row. He's willing to forgive us completely of all of our sins. That's the good news that I want to share with you. God loves you. The Bible says that God is not willing that anyone should perish, but everyone come to repentance. Won't you, if that's you, call upon the name of Jesus Christ right now? Won't you ask him to forgive you of your sins? The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Won't you do that now, wherever you are? Please, take God up on his amazing, loving offer. I'll let you down. Man will let you down. People will let you down. But God never will. He wants to adopt you into his forever family. He loves you. He's willing to forgive you of anything and everything you've ever done, past, present, and future. It's amazing. Please, call upon Jesus now. Well, this has been Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church. If there's anything that we can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Our number and information will come up here on the screen here shortly. And remember, I hope to see you in heaven. God bless. Thank you for watching this presentation from Sunrise Baptist Church. If you would like to send us a letter or any other kind of postage, you can reach us at 1780 Betty Lane, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89156. For more information, you can give us a call at 702-452-8599 or email us at bcrone at getalifemedia.com or you can visit our website at www.getalifemedia.com. Billy Crone and this ministry can also be found on Facebook and Twitter. Join us for services at www.sunriselv.com.